Okay, so this video is just to show you some of the uh, user interface in Unity. And so if I'm in Unity here, I can create a user interface object. Um, you have text, image, raw, and then you have buttons and other type of buttons. Um, you also have panels, which can contain other items and scroll views as well. So we can work with this. So first of all, I'll just create an image, user interface image, and what comes up in the scene here is the canvas and a node, which is the image. And I can see from my scene, if I highlight the image and press F on the scene, I can see where that's fitting into the, uh, the canvas here. So it actually draws that in your scene. Um, and you can see down there is the image. We can move that around and reshape that as we need to. So if I wanted to have that centered, that can that could be there. Um, so within that, you have this uh, alignment. So as a as a, um, a scene may may change in scale, an object may move in relation to that. So this is going to be moved in relation to the center point. And that's represented by these four um, uh, triangles here. But you can change this if you want it to always to be on the right hand side. For example, you can click this here, and that will always stay on. Actually, it's the left hand side, but I'm looking at that the wrong way around. So if I turn that around again, um, and then I can see it's matching the, the way it's looking on that image there. So I actually want to click on this one and say snap to the left um, and that means if I change the size of this to free aspect ratio that will move uh, and stay in that position as I move the whole the whole piece here. If I were to make it relative to the right hand side like this then if I move this then that stays relative to that edge. So that's how you do your alignment. You also have some other um, aspects there as well uh, within this. So you can change the pivot point and scales and rotations. So within here, this tells you which sprite you're using. So you can bring in a, a new sprite um, as an image. So if I just find an image um, from my pictures and some anatomy ones, which are. Uh, I have uh, let's find something useful. Um, okay, this is an icon. So we can bring in an icon. I'll drag that into the project here, and that will be imported. So this one here, when I click on it, it says, what type of texture is it? Is it a texture which will fit onto a, a 3D object, or a sprite, 2D, or user interface? So I'll click on that. There are some other options, I'll let you look into those yourself, but we've got that into sprite mode. It's a single image, or is it maybe a sheet of images for, for sprites. But now I should be able to click on image here, or I need to apply this change that I've made there. Um, and now if I go back to this item here and click, I can add in this icon there. So now that should it's still moving along with it, but if I want it to be in the center, I can, I can change that. So that icon's in there. So any any graphics you make, um, and logos and things like that, you would bring in in that manner. So if you want to create interactivity, then you'll want to create in, within this canvas, if you want to, you can create a button. Um, Obviously, I'm not going to go into the, the virtual reality button because there may be a separate way of doing this, but if I just show you how to work with buttons here, um, that will give you a head start on that. So this is using the, um, the sliced button. So if you see these corners here, it will keep that at regular size and it will stretch this part in the middle, which means it won't, it won't distort when it does that. So if I take this button and I can have that at the bottom of the scene there, I'm going to bring back my ratio, which was a tall, small um, mobile phone look, and 
So that's that's how you make a button. You have a drop down menu here, which allows you to have text within that. And I can say uh, start. And I might actually do that in capitals. Um, and you can change the font. So if you brought a font in, you can drop it into your project and you can choose your own font as well. So if I just save that for a moment. Uh, and if I want to use a font, I should be able to go to my font book um, and just drag it, drag it straight in. Do you have a font book somewhere? Um, so from here, I can pick my font. Uh, so if I want that one, I can right click and it should be able to show in Finder for me. And I'll just drag that again, I'll drag that into the um, project area and that should become a font that I can use. So if you bring in a couple, you may want to choose them when you're in there. But now if I go back to the text here, I should be able to choose which one I'm going to use. So there you go, so you're setting up the style of that as well by bringing the fonts in. So now if I play this, um, I can click on that button, no, it's still loading. <laughs> you can see it blink when it presses. Um, and again, you can set that up when that, how that works. So this will stretch as the system moves so the, on, the, on this option. So we're using this bottom right one here, which means it will stretch to fit that portion of the screen. So again, now if I put that back into free aspect ratio and start moving that, oh, that should stretch, but it's not. Oh, that's just the text, actually. The button is fixed in the center, so that's not stretching. Um, okay, so I'll stop that again, and what we want to do is how do we get an action to happen when we press the button? And that's when we connect that to a piece of code. So if I create a script, you can create a JavaScript or a C sharp script. Um, and I will put in there. Um, I'll just call it user interface. And I'm going to create a really simple script that we can we can look at. But you can change change the code on that as well. So I open that in Mono Develop. You may use um, Visual Studio if you're on a, on a PC. So I'm going to ignore these bits where it says void start and void update because we're not going to use those. Um, but what I want to do is uh, make a public class. So it'll be public void and then let me do that for a second. It's easier just to sort of start with that. So um, I can actually adapt these ones. So I can say public void uh, start button. So I'm changing that one so it's not the uh, same one. And uh, public void, it's got void already. Um, and I can say pause, pause button. And this will call these scripts um, if I tell it to connect that to a button. So just so I can get that information of whether it's working or not, I'll put in this code here, debug log, uh, and then I can say start button pressed, semicolon. So debug log will just send an information saying I'm running this script. So you know the functionality is working and then you can add in the different um, code that you want as well after that. So if I copy that and paste that into the second function I've put in there, I can say uh, pause button pressed and I'll save that one and that will be embedded in my, my Unity scripts here. So to make that work with the button, I need to go down to here where it's got a button script and it's got a target graphic. So you can change the image of this if you want to. So we could change the background image to be uh, what we've used already. Um, 
but I won't. Um, and then you can say on click. And this is the important thing. So we say on click, you can add something there. Runtime only. And then what we need to do is have the scripts that we're going to work with. So if I create an empty object, a game object, which is just a transform, nothing else, nothing uh, physical about it, and I'm going to call that one scripts, game object scripts. And I will attach this script to that object. Um, and that should have those public functions in there. Um, and once I've done that, I can then go back to the button if I go back to the button here, then I can tell it that I want this one to uh, use this object. So I'll drag that object onto there. And then it's got the functions listed within that. So game object, uh, user interface, which is what I made. And I've got one called start button. So that's the one that the function that I put in there. So now if we look down here on the console, it should happen that when I play this now, I just count to three before I press it because it might be slow. Press that, it's a start button pressed. So I know that that bit of code is working. Um, and if I've done that, then I may, uh, if I save that scene, I may, may want to have a new scene um, within which I could have a um, another object. I say a pause button in there and then come back to that. Um, and so if I just save that as level one and you may just do it all in one one scene yeah. but if I go back to de um, to uh, to this code here and I could say load is it level I can't remember what it is now so level load. ah no it would be application dot low level load uh, wait till I've done it because I might not be right. Uh, load level is what I want. So load level. No. Tell you what, I'm just going to look this up on Google <laughs> because I forget. I normally copy out of Google, so and and that's that's acceptable. So uh, uh, Unity load level. Um, yes, it was load level. So if I go into the scripting API, it will have the example of what the code is, um, and I can copy paste that in. So uh, application load level, and we can just say high score, and but we'll, we'll use the idea of level one. So I'll just paste that in. Uh, Um, so I'll save that and then I'll just check to make sure I spelt them the same so that I didn't have a capital on this one. So I'm just going to alter that um, to match. And so now when I play it, it should go from that one. Let's go. Yeah. See, one couldn't be loaded because it's not been added to the build scene settings. So just to make that work, it is, it is going to work. When I say build settings here, then I can say the first thing I want to do is uh, yeah. this one. And then the next one I want to do is, is this one here. So um, now if I play it, press start, mm. it does load up that level and that runs. Oh, I see. Um, there's a couple more things you can work with in this. So uh, there's also a um, so the user interface. Side of control. So you've got sliders and control bars. So if you want to have text that has a, you won't want that in virtual <laughs> reality. Um, scroll bar, drop down. Um, Probably enough of that. I think you can also, though, have a um, uh, a type of layout system for this as well. 
So if I just try it here, add component and layout, you've got a layout element, rectangle transform, uh, context size, so vertical layout group. So we've got a list of buttons. So what we should do is try this on, on our menu. So if you go from the start button, level one, if this was like options, we could say within this we might have, if I just open a, make a user interface in there, simple one. And then if I add the component here of layout, uh, vertical layout group, then that it will should fit. be transparent uh, if I played it, the image. Guy, right. yes, this should be transparent. This should be transparent. And um, this one? If you want that to be transparent, you can change the image within that. So you can change the image that it links to. Mm. The moment it's white, or you can change the color here. So you've got the alpha channel, and you can change the color as you need to. So you, you can have some control over that. Even if it's got the sprite in there, you can affect the um, color of that as well from um, there. So if you want it to be transparent or hidden, you, uh, you can work with that. So i um, just getting a little confused over what I was doing with this uh, object here. So I'm going to bring in a panel now um, within that. And this is just an area which is covering the whole the whole of the canvas now. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use the um, what I thought I'd apply to the canvas. I can use this layout vertical layout group here, um, and that should allow me to if I make buttons within there, I should be able to have them fit to the whole piece. So the whole they should fit to size. If I make another button as well. You should get them to fit to the size of that grid that you've made. So that one's shrunk to the other one. So this one's gone to the wrong, the wrong spot, which is a bit odd. But you can see how that's kind of shrunk to be the right size. If I duplicate that one again, then you've got three buttons, four buttons, um, and so that will scale with that item. So if you've got a certain amount, but it does the layout for you. So mm -hmm. if you're adding. So I created this panel here, which is a user interface element, and I added a component, which is a script, and I've put in this vertical layout group, and that gives you a very neat way of, of working. And then for each of these buttons, you would go in and add um, um, what you need it to, to say, and adjust the text shape for that as well, and do a similar thing with the, the links to that. Um, and then again, if you want to change the uh, the way the panel works, this is to stretch to fit the whole the whole size of the screen. But you can give it a border. Let's say it's 48 on the all around. Mm -hmm. um, so you can make that a bit neater like that as well. So you see the background while you're in there. Um, and to get that to to go back to the the other piece, we can again use the user interface on one of these buttons. So if I create an empty object again, and just so I know, I'll call that script. And I can attach that to this, this button here. And using the... Uh, I haven't attached the script yet. So I'll put this script onto that game object. Now when I go back to the button, I should be able to pick the function from user interface, uh, which is, let's say, the pause button. It's not actually the pause button. But just to make it go back to the other one, um, we can add in the code here, which is um, load level, level one, um, demo. I think that's what I called it. No, again, I've capitalized it. Um, so I just need to make sure that is the yeah. same case. And so now when I play this, if I click the first button, it'll take me there, mm. and that'll take me back. 
Um, so that's really how the kind of quick explanation of how to work with user interfaces there.